reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derby and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they t tried to go on into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision, a Macedonian stone before him and implored him with these words, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Verbum Domini. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. He made us his we are, his people, the flock he tends. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. Gloria tibi nomine. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave 
is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. Verbum Domini. You know, almost everyone wants to be loved or liked. And when we are not loved, disliked, or hated, you know, we, we can feel a little sadness. You know, and this, this can often be very difficult for us when people do not like us. And then when they hate us. You know, Jesus tells us today that the world will hate us because it hated him first. And though we may feel maybe a little grieved inside, a little saddened that people don't like us, especially when those close to us stop liking us and even start to hate us, and we feel saddened inside, but we need to be of good cheer. We need to be encouraged by this because though Though it, it, it may be difficult, God is doing something, a very beautiful and powerful work. And so we need to be grateful because God is using us. So here in this passage today, you know, Jesus has already told, instructed the disciples that they are called to be fruitful to go out and evangelize, to, to minister, to spread his love. You know, he, he assures them of his own love for them, tells them that they are called to love in return, just as he loves. And though Jesus himself, him being all love, you know, illuminating the world with his, his truth, his charity, his mercy, his compassion, innocent as he was, people still hated him. And looking a little further in the life of Jesus, remember that for many years he, was, he had a hidden life. You know, there he was in Nazareth, you know, working as a carpenter, very simple, humble life he lived. And known by the people around him in his neighborhood and community. But yet years later, he enters his public life through the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes forth. You know, it, it is time to, 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 to do the will of the Father. To preach the gospel. The anointed one is, is here on scene now, present, making himself visible. And then... You know, he goes back to his own town of Nazareth. And they despise him. And Jesus, Jesus says, he says that, you know, those of, of his own, you know, that, that they rejected him. Those closest to them. And so even Jesus himself experiences this sadness, this grief. But Jesus was God, the Lord, doing the will of the Father... It doesn't stop him, doesn't hold him back. He's not afraid, and he goes forward, loving, serving. And so we have this example in Jesus Christ, but even much more, because the life of Christ is within us. And the life of Christ in us, as we begin to love God more, pray more, learn him more, about him more, then this 
This life in us is illuminated from us. It, 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 because there's a radiance there. Now, when Jesus was, 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 a, was, was attacked or persecuted or questioned or scrutinized, rejected, no, they, here, is, here he is, all, all love, all truth. And this is, this, is, this is light coming forth. Here is God present to them. Him who is truth and love himself. And those who were not in sin, those who had hardened heart, who, who were in sin, who had hardened hearts, were convicted. Because the darkness within them was now exposed, first within themselves. It says, wow, here's, who is this? You know, them feeling this conviction within them. Oh, well, I'm wrong in this, but yet fighting it. And in fighting it, they start to hate the Lord, dislike him. So, you know, remember also is that when, when Jesus was in certain places around certain people, demons even came forth because here's the light. He's exposing the darkness. He's exposing evil. Sometimes he doesn't even, he doesn't even have to say anything. And the demons say, there's the Holy One of God. Remember that one scene where they says, you know, uh, Jesus is going to cast them out. Oh, cast us out into the pigs there. No, because they, they know his power. They see that this is God. Here is love. Here is truth here. And they're scared. Because they, they're exposed. No, first within themselves, like I said. And so, so for us, it's the same thing. You know, remember the life of Christ is in us. As we draw closer to the Lord, there's this radiance here. And it convicts people. We're bringing the light of Christ wherever we go. And that's why Jesus tells us, he says, let your light shine. You know, do, you know let, let, it, let, it, let it be bright. He tells us this in Matthew chapter 5, right after the, the Beatitudes. He says, don't, don't let your light be hidden. Bring it out. But yet the, the people around us, here they go. Like they, they see that. There's, and, then, and then their own darkness is, is revealed. Just as, as in the time of Jesus. First within themselves. You know, they start to look upon you. And it's like, who, who are you? Who do you think you are? You know, if, we, if some of us have had a transformation in our life, some kind of conversion, you know, they start to want us the old way. You know, they, they, they think about us before. It says, oh, you were so much more fun. Says, well, we were in sin before. Now we're, we're love. Now we know love. We know peace because we have Jesus with us. You know, or sometimes some of us, you know, God calls us a little further, a little deeper in, in our commitments with him. So we join prayer groups. We join organizations within the church. We're now giving more of our time, our talents, to the work of God. And then the, and the family questions it, the friend, your friends. So why are you always in church? You know, you're doing the works of God so that the charity of God is now coming forth more so than ever, the truth of the Lord. And so they, they, there it is, there's the conviction again. You know, and and so we start to lose sometimes friends. Family members start to despise us. And this hurts. No, it's, it's never easy. But it's a good thing. Because a beautiful and powerful thing is happening. The Lord is coming forth. I mean, sometimes we can be so, so grieved in this time, so sad in this, like, man, nobody likes me anymore. I lost my friends. Maybe we lost a best friend. My family's not paying attention to me. They're talking about me. They're complaining. And now they're always criticizing. They're scrutinizing me. They're questioning me. They're trying to trap me sometimes. But they did this to Jesus. So what's happening in the life of Jesus? You're living it. And this is, this is, this is a powerful thing. So, so it's an opportunity for us to grow even closer and to be more in union with him. 
So it's a good thing happening to us. And that's why we need to rejoice because the Lord is doing a great work within us. So, it, so we shouldn't be saddened if the world hates us. Let them hate us. Oh yeah, they, they may attack us. You know, even some of the early Christians were, were slandered. You know, people spread rumors about them, said lies about, about this, this, this church, the churches there and the people in them. No, but God always exposes the darkness. God, the Lord, never lets us be put to shame. And though, yes, they, they persecuted, they rejected Jesus. They even tortured and killed him. And he accepted this for love of us. And we are saved through this great sacrifice of his. And yet the world would think that, yeah, we won. No, because then he rises again. And so, brothers and sisters, in our service to God, as we're committing ourselves further in our, in our prayer, in our heart, in our own selves, giving our entire being to the Lord, yeah, we, we may be losing things, we may be losing friends, but we're gaining more of the life of Jesus Christ. We're walking further in the power and the glory of God. And yes, we, they, they may complain about us, they may persecute and even reject us, Talk about us, but God will not let us be put to shame. Yeah, we may be dying. We feel like it's, like it's a death, death to the world, death to the flesh. But remember, we're with Jesus here. And if we die with Jesus, we also rise with him. Remember that what, uh, what St. Paul says, Romans chapter 8. He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Him who gave his son to die for us, will he not also give us all things as well? God is always with us. He's always present with us. You know, we could, we, we could be strengthened in the knowledge that the life of Christ is burning within us, is radiating out of us. That is telling us again that the Lord is all around us. The Lord is within us. He's there. He's present. That's why he's saying in, in, in further verses in that same chapter, it says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So we need to, we need, we need to know this, be assured of it. Because this, this will, will, will keep us together, especially when, when we're being attacked, when it, comes, when it seems it's coming from all over the place. You know, yeah, the world hates you. Yeah, the world will attack you. Jesus says in chapter 16, John chapter 16, yeah, the world hates me. The world isn't attacking me. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so we will too. And that's why Paul tells us again the same chapter, Romans 8. He says we are more than conquerors. Because we, we don't let these persecutions, we don't let these rejections, we don't let this suffering destroy us. Because we're alive in Jesus Christ, because we know that we have a God that loves us. We know that we are living the life of Jesus Christ, that his life is being manifested in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, if this, this, is, this is us, this is the Christian life. This is a wonderful and beautiful thing. So rejoice in the Lord always. He is our strength. He is our God. And so, yes, like Jesus, if the world hates you, you know, remember that he overcomes the world, and so will we. The Lord will never let us be put to shame. And if we are dying with him, be assured that we will rise with him in his glory, in his power. God bless you all.